The Rise and Fall of Leo V Eastern Roman Emperor Leo V, a.k.a. the Armenian, ruled the empire from 813 to 820 AD and was the second emperor to not have a dynasty. He earned the nickname due to his Armenian heritage. The first emperor to not have a dynasty, that honor belonged to Phocas, a former soldier who led a military mutiny against his emperor, Maurice, and reigned for eight years until he was executed by the next man to become emperor, Heracles. Leo V was crowned Emperor of the Romans on July 12, 813, after the previous ruler, Michael I, abdicated his throne a few weeks after fleeing the Battle of Versenicia against the Bulgarians and the resulting fallout from his perceived cowardice. He did this in order to prevent a potential assassination coup. Michael I, before leaving Constantinople to become a monk, named Leo his trusted general to be his successor. Michael's son, Theophlact, and Nicatus were castrated so their dynasty wouldn't continue. Two major events occurred during Leo V's short reign. First was a 30-year peace treaty he signed with the Bulgarians, temporarily ending their war in 1815. The second was the reinstatement of iconoclasm in the Eastern Roman Empire. Leo V felt that the veneration of icons led to their defeat against the Bulgarians and that they were being punished by God for worshipping holy images. Leo, however, took advantage of the second iconoclast revival and used it to seize the properties of icon using wealthy monasteries. He ordered one of the major religious supporters of icons, Theodore the Studite, exiled from Constantinople and had him later publicly flogged for refusing to get with the program. In the fall of 1820, turmoil was brewing in Leo V's court as his right-hand man, Michael the Armorian was displeased with the emperor for divorcing his sister-in-law and began organizing a group of conspirators to assassinate him. Leo learned about the assassination plot and had Michael arrested and imprisoned in the imperial dungeon on Christmas Eve morning and was scheduled to have him executed the day after Christmas. But the scheme went on even though Michael was locked up and later that night the assassins arrived at St. Stephen's Chapel where the emperor was attending midnight mass. They disguised themselves as members of the choir. The assassins discarded their robes and brandished their weapons at the emperor. The officiating priest was killed by the assassins who thought he was Leo, which gave the emperor enough time to grab a large cross from the altar and use it as a weapon to try and fend off the killers while calling out for his bodyguards. Unfortunately for Leo, his bodyguards were unable to enter the chapel because the assassins blocked the door and killed Leo on the communion table and carved him up after hacking off his arm. Leo's corpse was taken out of St. Stephen's Chapel and was dragged through the snowy streets of Constantinople where it was taken to the Hippodrome for the public to see. Michael, who directed the assassination from his prison cell, was taken out of the dungeon and named the new emperor but he had to be crowned wearing chains because the key to them was in the body of Leo, who was currently being dragged around the Hippodrome racetrack. And since it was early Christmas morning, there were no blacksmiths available. Immediately after his death, Leo's sons, Zimbasios, Basil, and Gregory were castrated and exiled to monasteries located on Prince's Island off the coast of Constantinople. Unfortunately, his fourth son, Theodosius died right after his castration. His wife, Empress Theodosia, was sent to live with her surviving sons as well in exile. Thanks for watching another episode of the Byzantine history of the Eastern Roman Empire. My name is Joseph Ulevis, your illustrious narrator, and I bid you adieu.